What's going on guys? It's Joseph and welcome to the most dramatic Bachelor recap yet. That's right, I'm talking about last night's episode, week four, episode four on this video. I'm going to talk about the one-on-one -on -one date, the group date, the second one-on-one -on -one date, the rose ceremony, and for the first time it's now week four. So I'm going to give you guys my power rankings. I'm going to give you guys my top four girls, the girls that I feel are most favored to get the hometowns when that comes around. And I'm going to give you a fifth as one just on the outside on the bubble looking in to that hometown four. So let's get right away. So before we figure out what's going on, before we get to that one on one date, they're at the mansion. And right away, we see Kaylin and Hannah B interacting. I saw something on Instagram that they posted uh, before the episode last night. I believe it was Hannah B that uh, was in an orange dress and she was like, orange is the new pink, you know, doing the whole Mean Girls thing. And then Hannah, or excuse me, Kaylin responded up with that with, I don't know who said orange is the new pink and she had a beautiful pink dress on. So a little nice back and forth on social media. Always love to see that. That rivalry just continues to heat up and get more interesting. Chris Harrison comes out and Hannah B really just got trolled this entire episode. She, Chris Harrison came out and this had to, been, had to have been staged, called Hannah B. Kalen, who's, as I mentioned, and as you know, they are rivals, arch nemesis. And calls her by the wrong name. And if anyone's name, he called her Kaylin. This was so staged, but at the same time, so funny. Stick around, I'm gonna tell you guys where she got trolled the next time. And then Chris Harrison was getting everyone hyped up. She's like, okay, Colton is not here, but we gotta get out of here. We are actually going somewhere that this show has never gone. And all the girls are freaking out. They're screaming, high-fiving, hugging, free, freaking out. I'm just ready for when all that calms down. Chris Harrison just goes, that's right. We're going to tropical Cincinnati or Des Moines, Iowa or Oklahoma City. I just wanted him to say that so bad. I thought that would have been hilarious. But no, they went to somewhere way cooler. They went to Singapore, a place that I've always wanted to go. It looked amazing. So all the girls in the house, they got to go spend some time in Singapore with Colton. This seemed really, really cool. So the first date card that comes out, it's for a one-on-one -on -one, and Tasha gets the one-on-one -on -one date card and they went bungee jumping. This was so cool. Something I was so jealous of. They had this big, huge structure and they had them wrapped around the ankles and they'd jump off and it'd be a free fall and it was just bungee jumping, it was so cool. And they did a little sidebar with Colton when he was talking about it. He goes, you know, this is something I've always wanted to try, you know, because of my professional career playing professional football, I, you know, really had to uh, play it safe, you know, with things like skydiving, bungee jumping, sex, come on, Colton, we know what you're talking about there. So the date went really, really well. They both did it together. It was really cool. Then they shared some time. You know, there's always that part two after the activity or place that they go. They have a nice, you know, pretty much a formal date at the end of this. And Tasia talks about how she was married once and then divorced and how that was really tough and kind of shared that experience. She gets a rose. This was a really good date. This makes me want to buy stock in Tasha. She had a really good date. I really like her. I felt like... Colton got to know her better and so did we as an audience. So really, really excited to where, where um, I think Colton and Tasia's relationship is gonna go from here. I only see it going up. Now the date card, 13 girls on this date card. My girl, Hannah G, Elise, Kerpa, Sydney, Heather, Anyeka, Tracy, Nicole, Demi, Courtney, Katie, Cassie, and last but not least, Hannah B. So she gets announced last. Here's where that... Second part of the trolling I talked about is coming in. She gets announced last. Whose name wasn't announced? Only one girl's name wasn't announced. Kaylin. That means she gets the one-on-one. -on -one. So Hannah B's waiting around the whole time. Do I get the one-on-one? -on -one? Do I get the one-on-one? -on -one? Not only doesn't she get the one-on-one, -on -one, Kaylin gets a one-on-one -on -one and she is the last name announced for the group date. So she did a little sidebar after this. She goes, well, I was the last name announced. Kaylin's name wasn't announced. That means that she gets the that means she gets the one-on-one -on -one date. So she pulled out a nice thing, a cab, and threw some back. That's just some that's just what you have to do sometimes. I don't blame you, Hannah B. Good for you. You're gonna make the most of this. So, of course, when Colton shows up, 
Demi is the first one running to him, jumps on his back, riding on his back, piggyback ride, you know, doing the whole thing. Doesn't even care that there are 12 other girls there. That's what I respect about Demi, though. I have to respect it. That's what I respect about Demi. Then we had um, Hannah B. Um, you know, she was talking, like, talking in Colton's direction, but she was just being very, like, fragile with it, being very tentative with it, not very confident. So Colton didn't even notice, especially when there's 12 other girls. Hannah B had herself a pretty rough start to this group date. And I just hate her complaining and talking about all these things because really, I'm just anti Hannah B. I like Kaylin better. I like a lot of the other girls better. I really do not like Hannah B. If you got stock in Hannah B, sell that, cut your losses, liquefy it, whatever. Hannah B, write her off. And then Demi, she got some one-on-one -on -one time um, during kind of this cocktail hour post going out during the day to talk to Colton. And apparently Demi's mom was just released from federal prison, how that was tough on her family, tough for Demi. So she shares some things there. Her and Colton have a moment. She gets the rose. So now we have Tasha and Demi with a rose. There's one more rose before the rose ceremony to get out there, stick around to find out who gets that third pre-rose ceremony rose. Now, and Courtney, just pretty much the whole episode, she is just complaining, sulking, complaining about Demi specifically, feeling sorry for herself, not doing anything about it. I'm not getting enough time with Colton. Haven't talked to Colton yet, yet she is just sitting there doing nothing, nothing at all. I don't have any sympathy for people, and especially these girls, who are complaining about something when really they could just take action and make some things happen for themselves. And they're just not, they're feeling sorry for themselves. They're trying to get others to feel sorry for them. I don't like this at all. And this was Courtney, the entire two hours, the entirety of this episode. So Demi gets a rose. So we don't get to see, we don't get to hear a one liner at the rose ceremony, but she didn't leave us hanging. And when she got the rose, she said, Oh, my heart. So we get another one-liner from Demi. I think we still got two more one-liners for Demi. I think after two episodes, two more episodes, she's going to be gone. So be checking out for the more Demi one-liners. And she's out for blood. And Demi is real. She explained to Courtney like, hey, I'm not here for the other girls. I'm here for Colton. And I'm like, that makes sense. And even if you don't like it, even if she's evil, even if she's a little diabolical and immature at times, absolutely she is. But Demi's real and I have to respect that. I respect that about Demi. And until she shows me she's just putting on a show and just there for TV, I'm gonna continue to respect it. Now it's time for Kaylin. It's time for Kaylin's one-on-one. -on -one. They went shopping. They were going to all these designer brands. She was getting dresses, absolutely spoiled, catered to by Colton. She comes back with like 10 bags and all the girls are like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. But really deep down inside, there is a white coal fire burning inside of them. Like, why isn't that mean? Why does it have to be, be Kaylin, especially Hannah B? She is just, you can tell she's stressed out. Her acne is starting to break out. It is just not good. Things are going <laughs> downhill quickly down a very steep and slippery slope for Hannah B, especially when it comes to everything that she sees Kaylin and Colton continuing to develop. And they go on their night date. And here's where I have to get serious because this is really serious. And this was a big thing for Kaylin to share. Apparently when she was a sophomore in college, there was a party. Her and some of her friends were uh, drugged in, in the drinks that they were served and they were sexually assaulted. Um, she went to a hospital for a rape kit that was turned away by the hospital, which is just terrible. Like this situation is just horrible. I mean, I was silent. I mean, I felt sick and just horrible listening to this. No one should ever have to experience anything like this. And by the time she got to the next hospital for the rape kit, there was, there wasn't any decisive evidence because too much time has passed. And that's just a horrible travesty. And I just hate to hear that. So I wish nothing but the best for Kaylin because I think she's a good girl. No one deserves anything like that to happen to them. And I wish nothing but great things for her continuing forward with Colton and beyond that, no matter whether she's with Colton or not, that should never happen to anybody. That's terrible, it's sickening, and it was very tough to listen to, but I'm proud of her and she's very big of that to come out and explain that to Colton. And I also think we have to applaud Colton because he handled this 
very, very well. He said the right things. He didn't try to say too much. He didn't try to relate to it. He was just there for, and that is what a good guy should do. So seriously, applause to Colton. Very big of him. So now at this point, there's a lot of girls in tears. Like I mentioned, the acne breaking out with Hannah B. Like things are just not good. And you can tell these girls have been there for about a month now. They've done some travel. They're living in close quarters. They don't have their phones. There's no social media. No, nothing in the outside world is reaching them. They're not reaching the outside world. Some of these girls are starting to crack. Some of them are like, you know what, if I don't get a rose, at least I get to wake up and check Twitter tomorrow. So that's where I think it's, it's at. That's the point I think it's at for some of these girls. Now we're moving into the pre-rose ceremony cocktail party. This is always fun. Hannah G and Colton once again have another great talk. Have another great talk. If you got Hannah G stock, I hope you got in early because this is like Amazon. It is through the roof. When they're together, it's just always it's it's subtle, it's simple, it's authentic, it's genuine. I love them together. Hannah B is still my number number one. All their interactions, but we don't get to see a lot of them. But they just continue to have great interactions, and I think where Hannah B was very, or excuse me, Hannah G was very smart in what she did. She realizes that she needs to open up to Colton. Yeah, this has been going along nicely, but really to take it to the next level, she has to open up. Her and Colton, they had an intimate situation. They were kissing very passionately. She opened up about some things. Hannah G, not being complacent, taking this to the next level, keeps her at number one and keeps her around. Hannah G, she's playing a perfect game so far. Perfect game th so far for Hannah G. Now, then Kaylin and Hannah B were talking off to the side, and apparently they squashed their beef. Where's the fun in that? Where is the fun in that? I don't like this at all. I don't like them being buddy-buddy. They're not buddies. They broke up as friends for a reason. There's tension there for a reason. I don't see this lasting long. They're going to be at each other's throats by the end of next week's episode. Guarantee it. Take it to the bank. Now Demi and Courtney, here's the real rivalry. Here's the real tension in the house. Demi went up to talk to Colton and she's like, Courtney is the cancer of this house. She is not good. She does not deserve you. She does not deserve your heart. She is the cancer of this house. Demi is just so evil and diabolical. And I don't think she's lying here. I really she thinks that she feels that. Maybe to her she's a cancer, but I really don't think Courtney overall to the house is that bad, even though... I'm really not particularly a fan of her in the first place. Then Courtney follows up with that. She gets word of that, goes up to Colton, goes off on Demi, talks about how, you know, basically she's the cancer, tried to totally flip it. Um, that really didn't go that well for her. And then all of a sudden, after they're done talking, waiting for Colton to come out for the rose ceremony, Demi and Courtney are going at it in front of all the girls. And there was a great shot of Demi talking and Hannah G is like right here in the background. And you can just tell she like shot a quick smirk, like laughing, like looking at someone like Jim Halpert in the office, just giving the camera a look, just like, like one of those, like just because they're going back and forth and they're like, are they really doing this in front of all of us? Yes, Hannah G and the rest of the house. Demi doesn't mess around and Courtney's just taking it. So that's how it happened. Rose ceremony time. Demi, Taisha, Kaylin, all have roses. They're all safe. Anyeka gets the final rose, and Demi's face just lights up because not only is Courtney going home, but think back to the last week and the week before, Tracy, another one of Demi's mild enemies, is also going home. Demi has run these girls out of Malibu, out of the mansion, out of Singapore. Demi, the runway is now cleared. Her enemy, maybe she'll develop new ones, but the enemies. The sea has parted. Demi is rolling with the wind at her back downstream. Things are looking pretty good for Demi right now. Now, as I promised, I'm going to go over my power rankings, my top four, my favorites to go to the hometown. This is in a particular order. Hannah G, still my number one. Kaylin, who has really jumped up and made some great connections. She's number two. At number three, I have Elise, the harmless cougar who is awesome. I love Elise. And number four, Cassie. And on the outside looking in, I think a girl has been making terrific progress, especially with her one-on-one -on -one date, Tasia. She has been awesome. I really, really like Tasia. She's kind of come out of nowhere for me. And she is my number five closely on the outside looking in 
be look for her for one or two good more interactions with Colton to make her way into that top four. So think, and at the end, I can't forget this Demi, she does a toast and she goes to no more leeches. And they all cheers and they're all cheering like, Jesus, this is like a cult. And Demi is their, is their proven leader and she's just fearless. That's really what Demi is. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel to check out all my Bachelor videos. Comment below what, what your guys' power rankings are. Give me your top four. Follow me on Instagram, all linked down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk soon.